I'm going to show you the process of creating a multiprop, which has got animation. And the animation is going to be through an animated PNG. So we're going to create the PNGs, and then we're going to put them into a free assembler and create the animated PNG to use in the actual animation. Now, the advantage of a PNG is you've got transparency and alpha channel. So that's why I'm using the animated PNG to show you how to do this process. And what we're going to create is a flaming match. Now, the idea behind this flaming match is that it flares and then goes onto a flame and keeps going. So that's actually what we're going to create. And if you move the match, so if I go to my scene and choose this, you see there's three parts to it. But if I just choose the match and move it around, you'll see that everything goes with it because these are linked to the match. And we're just going to go through the whole process of creating the whole thing so that we've got a multiprop, saving the multiprop inside content so that we can then use it again later on. You could even sell it if you wanted to later on as well. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to hit delete just to make sure in my scene everything's gone because it hasn't because the flare is actually only for the first less than a second actually. So nothing in my scene. Now, how did I go about creating it? Well, I actually downloaded an image and this image is a uh, an EPS but you can use an illustrator image. Um, you've got to find the image. The key is you've got to find an image. Now I got this particular one from FreePick. I do have a premium license, so I can download anything. You may need, this may be premium, I don't know. You're gonna to have to have a little look and see if you can find something similar that's not premium that you can use free of charge to be able to follow along. Whether you can use this one or not, I honestly don't know. You could use some of the other ones here if you wanted as well. Um, but go through something like FreePick or, or somewhere else where you can buy you can buy or, or download a vector and just search. You see, I did a match flare sequence, and that's what I searched. It's a sequence of flames, which I can then use to create a flare, and I can then carry on and create a, a, a flame. Okay, so how did I then do it? Well, the image comes in like this, and I need to select the flame. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a bit by holding the command key or the control key and the middle mouse wheel and and then just pushing and holding the middle mouse wheel until I find one. Let's, let's say we want to do this one here. Okay, so go to the node tool. So you're selecting the individual paths and select a path as a path. Oh look, and it's got a whole bunch of paths with it. So holding the command and the shift key, I can go through and choose which bits I want. So I don't think I want that one. Um, and I can just go up and are the ones above it. Yeah, I want that one, that one, that one. That pretty much gives me everything I want. I don't want any, definitely don't want that. That gives me everything for the flame. So what do I do at this stage? At this stage, group it and call it, we'll call it F2, because that'll be flame one, that'll be flame two. So uh, under layer, you can choose group, but notice the keyboard shortcut is Control G, Command G. That's a keyboard shortcut I use all the time. So, you know, if you get into this, you really need to learn to group and keyboard shortcuts saves you a lot of time. But anyway, I'm gonna do Command G. There is the group, name it F2. Okay, and hit enter, and that's saved. And then copy it, Command C, and then create a new artboard. Now, I don't need it to be full HD. I think 300 by 300 is going to be absolutely fine. And when you're creating an animated PNG, you want to create it the smallest size you can get away that will do the job. Okay, so 300 by 300. And under color, if you click this transparent background, you've got a transparent background. So you've got transparency. And then you create it. And then you paste. So you come over here and you do edit paste. And then your flame's in. Okay, I'm not going to do all the other ones because I've already done them. So I just want to show you the process. You find what you want, copy it, create a new artboard, paste it and then you just set it up. So this is what I've done for the flare. Gone through the whole process, and I took a match head, and then I've created five, div or taken five different flames. So I've got the first one, and then I've got the second one, and you can see, because it's a flare, it gets fairly big and fairly, uh, fairly bright, and then it settles down afterwards when it does a burn. But what you will notice is that the flame goes down. So right at the beginning here, See, it's right at the top, and then as it gets to the bottom, it's gone down. So that's a deliberate choice by me so to show it's going through the process. Now I want to create an image sequence. 
And that means I need to have the images to work from. So I need to export PNGs, which include transparency, so that I can then create the image sequence. Now, the best way to use a, a PNG maker is to create something that's going to be roughly a tenth of a frame long. So as you know, Cartoon Animator is 30 frames a second, but an APNG will work best with, say, something like tenth of a frame, so 10 frames a second. So you want to create enough frames so that you're going to use up most of a second before you start looping. Now, the, the particular one we're doing here for the flare, you won't loop, but when we do the flame one, we would loop it. So you just need to be a little bit careful about what you're going to choose. So how do you do that? Well, you select what you want. Here it is like this. That's just that particular one I want to show. Then you go to File, you go to Export, and then you can see it's all ready to go. It is a PNG. I've selected a PNG. Click Export and go to where you want it to, to save. Now, to save time, I have actually already done this. So Flame Flare. And there are the ones that I've created. Now, have a little look. There's the animated one, which um, uh, I created earlier. I'll show you how to do this, but there's the one I did. So I've got the first one, which is just the match head, then the first flame, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. However, I then took flame five, or flame, yeah, that flame there, and you see that's exactly the same one, except I moved it further down the flame head. And again, that one, I moved it further down the match head. And that one is further down the match head and probably a little bit bigger. The idea being is to create enough frames to make it look like the match is flaring. And I've got nine frames, which is perfect, really. Eight is fine, but that's going to be perfect for a flare. So I now need to create the animated PNG. Just before I create the animated PNG, let me just show you the process for the flame burn. So the flame burn is exactly the same. In this case, come back here, I chose a dud head. That one there, I think, possibly, or the next one. Yeah, that one. I just chose the dud head and save that. And then what I did with the various um, flames is I just modified them so they looked a little bit better. I kept them all fairly low so that they, they gave the impression of being burnt on the match head itself. Now, if you get one like that, that's showing a little bit of the match head. You can always make it just a tiny bit bigger if you want. Just move it into place. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave mine as is because I've already created the animated PNG. But um, if I was being a, a little bit more thorough, I might uh, create that. The other thing you can do, of course, is you can flip them, which I've not done. But if I was to flip this particular one, there you go. I could do it from the other side and just move it across. And that gives me a, a slightly different look. You go through the same process. You create all of the ones you want, and then you export one version like this, and then you export one version. No, so you don't export the dud head. Take that back. You leave the dud head on because you want it there all the time, but you don't want to see it blank at all. So the first export will be that, second export would be that, third export that, etc., etc. And the same as I did with the flare, with the burn, um, I also did the same thing. So you see that the, 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 the flames are the same. And, and I probably should have flipped that one over and I'll probably flip, uh, flip that one, well, whatever. So you can see I just did the same thing to create at least eight images, which is going to give me a good rolling burn because we're going to carry on this. This one's going to carry on looping and looping and looping. So the flame flare plays once because it's whoosh, and then the burn carries on going afterwards. OK, the other thing I did was I also exported a, a, a single match as a PNG. You can see here it is. Uh, where is it? Sorry, there's the match. So I just took a single match, um, which is going to be my prop. And I exported that as a PNG. So it's going to be a prop inside of Cartoon Animator. Then I built my scene up, which is very straightforward. So we go back to Cartoon Animator and we bring in the bits that we want. So the first thing we want is the match PNG. Bring that in. It is a prop, yes. And it's I'm at frame zero, as you can see down here. So do I want it a little bit bigger? Maybe I do. And we'll put it, say, about there, make towards the bottom, because obviously every, all the action's at the top. Now, um, it appears that I'm not at frame zero. I'm at frame four. So if, if ever you do this, you need to open it up. Make sure this button's selected so that you're, whatever you've got selected, is, is its controls are there. Open up the transform and then take that and drag it to the beginning. And then that frame is on is on frame zero, and you're not going to have any problems. Okay, so now that I'm ready to do that, done that, I can actually start bringing in the other assets. So the other assets consist of the flare, which is the animated PNG. How do I create the animated PNGs? 
So you need to download an application which is free. And I'll show you the application. It is this one here, which is the one I've got. There are a number of them on the um, internet and they're free. Animated PNG, so APNG Assembler 2.91. But if you search APNG Assembler, you'll get this. And then all you do is you take the frames. So I won't actually create them, but I'll just select them all. So you take the first one and shift the last one and just drag them into the assembler. Okay, first step, and you'll see that they play back at a tenth of a second. So 10 per, per second, 10 frames a second. And then you make sure it goes to the appropriate location. I'll stick this one on the desktop just for an example at the moment, and then click Save. And then when you're ready, you just click Make Animated PNG. Now, the reason that I created a 300 by 300 artboard is it's gonna be a lot quicker to actually export than doing a 1920 by 1080, even if there's nothing in it. Just doing something that size takes a lot more energy a lot more time a lot more computer power so just make sure that you you create your art boards as small as you can as, as appropriate to to do the job that's in hand don't create anything bigger if you can avoid it because it will just take forever and if you've got a really long one i've had them fail because i've tried to do things that are too big this is great for smaller animations but for massive animations i think we need to think about other ways of doing it okay you can see here it is it's created and that will play inside of cartoon animator so um, I'm just going to go to Cartoon Animator and I've got the flare. So actually, let's just bring in that particular flare. Why don't you just come, that was on my desktop. Animated PNG, drag it in. And this one is going to loop just once because this is the flare, just once. Okay, so I'm going to click OK. And I've got an error. Now it does this, I don't know why. You can see that that's actually come in. But if I click on it, animated, yep, it's all working. Okay, don't know why I have errors. If you do get errors like that, delete it and re-import it. But what I actually need to do with this one is I need to move it. And you see, I am actually on frame zero for a change. Move it to the appropriate place. So make sure it covers the head of the match that was there. And click away. Just make sure that looks about right. And then if I push play, it stops. Right, so when it stops, what you're going to do is, is, because there's only 10 frames a second rather than 30 frames a second, you get to the last frame, which is there, okay? And then you go forward one, two, three. So one, two, three frames. And then you turn the visibility off. So you can see the visibility is on all the time, but because I'm going to be now replacing it with the flame that's going to carry on burning, I can turn off the eyeball. Oh, and I've turned off the eyeball for the wrong thing. Okay, so I'm going to turn the eyeball back on again. I'm going to choose the animation. Now, you can see actually what I was talking about earlier, it has actually failed. So I'm going to delete that and just bring it in again. So if I delete it and bring it in again, it'll probably work this time. Don't ask me why this happens, but it does. So there you go, is the animated PNG. Loop once, okay. And there you go, it seems to be working properly. Come back to the beginning make it nice and big you can see it is actually showing here make sure it goes over the other one there you go that'll do and um that's done the trick so if i now push play okay so again i need to do the same thing i need to find out where it stops which is there one two three go to my visibility and turn off the eyeball so that one is only going to play up to 26 seconds, 26 frames, okay? Now I need to bring in my other one, which I've done in exactly the same way, but let me just get to it. And you see there is my flame animated PNG, so just drag that in. And that one is going to loop forever. Just want it to carry on burning and burning and burning, great. Okay, so it is a prop. The other one should have said prop, didn't, don't know why. Again, I need to make it fit. So that one's going to fit something like that. And again, just click away. Now, bear in mind, I'm not a frame zero. So you'll see that, that it has moved. So it doesn't matter. What I can do is just click off and make sure that everything's okay. It's not great. So I can see that by clicking on it. So I can just move it across, maybe make it a tiny bit bigger. Again, click on the match. That'll do, that'll do. So now this one is going to start at here. 
Okay, so select my flame. I'm going to look at transform, look at visibility. So what I tend to do at this stage is I turn off and then turn on visibility, which gives me a keyframe. My transform I want right back at the beginning, so I drag that to flame zero, and then I turn off the eyeball. So that one is not going to start until frame 26. So if I now push play, okay, now if I'm unhappy with that, and I am a bit, I can go back and say at this point, I want to make it a bit bigger. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, maybe something like that. And again, if you, you can leave it there if you want, because it doesn't really doesn't matter because it starts at that point. But otherwise, if you want to be tidier, you can take it to the beginning. Push play again. Okay, again, I would probably go in and make it a tiny bit bigger. But that, that gives you the process of creating the whole thing. Now, that's the animation. I think that one needs to be big. I'm sorry, I'm just going to do it one more time. I'm going to make it a bit bigger. There we go. And just, just, just because I'm fussy. And there we go. I'm going to push play again. There you go. That'll do. So that's how you create the process of, of doing all of that. However, we've not finished because I can't create a multiprop. I could go in and go to the multiprops and save it, but it wouldn't work at the moment because I haven't linked anything up. So you do need scene to create links. So I'm going to choose my flare. I'm going to go back to the very beginning at this stage. I'm going to link it up. So I want that to link to the match. So with the flare, which is this first one here created, I'm going to click the link button, which is there. And I'm going to come down to the screen and I'm going to hover over the match and click. So the flare is now linked to the match. Now I'm going to choose the animated flame, which isn't even visible yet, but that's okay. I'm going to click link and I'm going to come back and I'm going to click the match. Okay, so now that's all working. So if we move the match, so select the match and uh, let's do it at frame zero so we don't create lots of keyframes. Let's do it over here and now play. Again, if I do it from frame zero and over here. But also, if it actually physically was moving, so you can see that, that it's now fully attached. Okay, so this is the multiprop that we want to create. Okay, so I'm going to select all three items. So holding the shift key, make sure they're all selected. Now I'm going to go to content. You can see I've already created one. And I want to find under props, you'll find that there is a section called multiprop. Okay. So open up multiprop, you can see I've got a couple of things in there already. And I'm going to click save, and you'll see it says multiprop is saved under props multiprop. So I'm going to call it multiprop underscore match. Okay, and it's saved. There is the multiprop, and, and it's taken the frame that it was showing. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to delete this. And make sure that there's nothing left in my scene because this this little one, this is the flare at the beginning and that sometimes stays. So just be a little bit aware if it only goes on really quickly. So now I'm going to content and I'm going to take my multiprop match. And I'm going to stick it there. Okay, and I'm going to go to the beginning and um, play. Got a bit of animation going on there because I, I actually saved the animation because I should have taken the animation off. So um, it's animating. But you can see that the whole thing carries on going and it works with or without animation. So if you want to remove the animation, you'd need to go in and find the transform for the match itself. And then you'd need to sort of get rid of those bits of animation. And then you might want to resave over the multiprop. So if I come here, save the multiprop, click here, just make sure it's all saved. Okay, oops, just uh, those three. Go back to content, and then I'm going to overwrite it. Yes, I want to replace it. And now let's just delete it again, just to show you the process. So select it, delete, make sure there's nothing left in my scene, come back and bring in the multiprop. And there should be no animation this time. And there isn't. But we have created a multiprop item. So I hope you found that useful. Um, it shows you how you can use animated PNGs, you can create them yourself. And of course, that can then be linked to a character, the character can have it in their hand. You can do the same with a candle, all sorts of things. Um, but I, I've used this for, for quite a few different items that just create something that's a bit more fun and uh, interactive and, of course, reusable. As you can see, I did the similar thing with a candle. OK, I'm Andrew Davis. If you've got any queries or questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching.